Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Valiant Guitars is a new boutique guitar brand out of Ukraine, which is already super cool. Like, how many Ukrainian boutique guitar brands do you already know? And this Jupiter is a fantastic guitar. The attention to detail is insane. And while it may look like an old instrument, there are so many modern modifications here. It's an incredible rest modded take on a very vintage concept. And this thing is fully loaded. I'm talking switchcraft electronics, bare knuckle pickups, spoke wheel truss rod adjustment, duralumin components, and a relic traditional style instrument. Don't sleep on this brand, it's cool. Let's take a closer look. So I unboxed this guitar a good while ago, and at the time I called it my first Jazz Master because of the offset shape and the 25 and a half inch scale length. But as a lot of you pointed out, this control scheme is 100% Jaguar. So I guess technically, rather than a Jazz Master, this is more of like a baritone Jaguar thing, and that's even more dope, so let's talk about it. So first off, let's get the most important thing out of the way. If you do not enjoy Relics guitars, I'm almost sure you've already made that known in the comments. <laughs> People who don't like Relic guitars are not shy about sharing that opinion when absolutely nobody is asked. And that's completely okay. Valiant has non-Relic options as well, so the fact that this particular one has been artificially aged shouldn't put you off the brand. And personally, I love Relic instruments. I love the way they look, and more importantly, I love how played in and comfortable they feel when done right. And Valiant has done this right for the most part. The body is tastefully aged, there's a ton of finish checking, and the European alder is even exposed in certain places. It feels naturally played in. It's not just damage, which lesser quality relic jobs are absolutely sometimes guilty of. The guitar looks like it's had a rough but musical life. Even where the finish hasn't been completely rubbed off, it's still dinged, it's still scratched up, the pick guard and control plates have been scratched up too complete the look, it's all just incredible. Then it's got a bolt-on maple neck with titanium reinforcement. First time we've seen that in a guitar, usually it's carbon fiber reinforcement. But the crazy Ukrainians, they're like, nah, this time we're going full metal with titanium. <laughs> That's so dope. Speaking of titanium though, it's the same thing my Ridge Wallet 
is made out of actually who just so happen to be the sponsor of today's video and don't mind the change of light clothes or haircut totally not redoing this because the previous footage got corrupted filming the sponsor segue for the first time again so ridge have been a long time supporter of the channel in case you didn't know they're redefining the wallet moving us beyond the old traditional bulky wallets that tend to collect old receipts unused loyalty cards all sorts of useless crap in comparison ridge wallets have a super compact and durable frame with plates made of aluminum titanium or carbon fiber that can fit right into your front pocket and this was the wallet i was talking about earlier black titanium it's super metal the new limited edition topographic collection is super cool as well they've got iconic topographies engraved into the aluminum or if you hate nature they've got a ton of other designs to match your personality everyone is rfid blocking to thwart would-be scammers from stealing your card information and i love mine i'll never go back to a bulky wallet i love the minimalism and if you want to see why so many people are switching over to the ridge wallet head on over to ridge dot com slash agafish and for you guys if you use the code agafish you'll get 10 percent off your order with free shipping link in the description lifetime guarantee embrace minimalism while supporting the channel ridge.com slash agafish code agafish and while talking about titanium wallets is cool let's go back to the guitar so in part thanks to the titanium reinforcement this neck is solid valiant have warned me the guitar might need a total setup since it is sat in a warehouse for a long while while i was awaiting shipping it's pretty difficult to ship things internationally right now under Understandably, and uh, it just needed a slight, and I mean very slight, truss rod adjustment. But that is literally it. Other than that, nothing. So that was a great sign. Then when I actually got to playing it, I mean, it feels like a lot of the finish has been rubbed off the middle of the neck. The headstock's been dinged up too to match the relicking on the body. It just feels so, so awesome. Then the fingerboard caught me off guard because I thought it was roast, but it's not. It's roasted. Hornbeam. I'd never even heard of Hornbeam before. After a quick Google, it turns out it's classified as something called an ironwood, and it's, quote, rarely used in carpentry and furniture making due to the difficulty working it. It's supposed to be incredibly dense and durable already, and then they've roasted it too. Crazy Ukrainians. But hey, stability is not a problem with this guitar at all, so apparently it's worked and I'm not complaining at all. I also love the manner in which the fingerboard's been aged. A lot of times with aged guitars, the body will be nicely relicked, nitro checking, worn finish on the back of the neck maybe, the hardware patina, all that, and then the illusion is ruined when the fingerboard looks brand new. But even with this hard-ass roasted horn beam, Valiant has made the fingerboard look old. There's a ton of scuffs, little dents, like this fingerboard looks played the f in. Something I found a little amusing though is that even though the fingerboard looks like it has all this play wear, it doesn't actually feel like it. And it's partially because the jumbo frets are brand new and that's a good thing. Can you imagine if they put old corroded frets with dents on them in there? No thanks. <laughs> But it's also like they haven't really rolled the fingerboard edges. Rolled fingerboard edges is something the uh, Fender Custom Shop does, for example, to make the fingerboards really feel naturally played in. They haven't done that here, and the big frets keep your fingers high off the fingerboard, so legit, if you weren't looking at the fingerboard and you're just kind of playing this thing blind, it almost feels like a new guitar. I mean, apart from the neck feeling old, the body feeling old, but then the fingerboard doesn't feel played in, it's kind of brain twisting. But that's really the only area that the mix of vintage and modern has gone wrong for me. They've nailed everything else. The relict body with the slightly updated neck heel bevel for better upper fret access, that's great. The spoke wheel adjustment system integrated into the 22nd fret, genius. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video as well, it looks very similar to a Jaguar because of the front of the body, but it's got a longer scale length. Jaguars are normally 24 inches, which is quite short. This is 25 and a half inches, normal fender scale, so it handles drop tunings much better. And the fingerboard is a Gibson-esque 12 inches for a more modern feel than the looks would initially suggest. That with the modern C neck shape, I mean, this is a modern player 
100%. And if you're like me from all the pictures and b-roll, you might have also thought that all the metal plating and everything was chrome or nickel. Nope, it's made of something called duralumin, which is an aluminum alloy. Apparently it's most often used in the aviation industry because of how strong and lightweight it is. It's also used for vehicle armor in the defense industry. Crazy, crazy Ukrainians. And they've used duralumin everywhere. The pickup covers, the control panels, the neck plate, the control knobs that look awesome with the wooden indicators, even the bridge. And then did they use regular brass saddles? Nope, of course not. It's bell bronze, crazy Ukrainians. And if you thought duralumin parts and titanium neck and reinforcement wasn't enough, Valiant have gone full Jurassic Park in this with the features, sparing no expense. Diderio, Planet Waves, auto trim locking tuners, and can we just take a second to appreciate the black thumb screws and locking mechanism, it looks sick. Although I am hearing the newer runs will come with Goto 510 locking tuners instead, which are great, but these look way cooler and have the unnecessary, but still fun and actually kind of useful auto trim feature. So get this run before they sell out if you want the planet waves. Graph Tech Nut and Strange Trees too. I mean, it's genuinely insanely specced. And that's before we've even gotten to the pickups, which is a bare knuckle riffraff set. I mean, honestly, the more specs we run through, the more ridiculous this guitar gets. But Valiant were a bit concerned about sending this guitar to me because they were like, I don't know, these are old school vintage voiced humbuckers, they might not chug. Bruh, they're bare knuckles, they chug. They're a bit more mid-low output compared to, say, Ragnaroks, and they have a lot of treble bite, but they chug. And obviously, being vintage voiced and aiming to replicate that 60s humbucker sound, they do a lot more than just chug. What I especially love is you can individually modify each pickup's wiring using the slider switches. You've got the option for series, which is the normal setup for a humbucker, then single coil, and finally parallel. And I've been really enjoying parallel on the neck, especially for clean, so that's how I've got mine set up. But I love how with these sliders, you can have it permanently set up in whatever way works best for you. And you've got so much versatility on tap, literally right there. And all the internal components are obviously top of the line too. I mean, at this point, were you expecting anything else? CTS pots, the tone is a no load pot. So when it's up to 10, it's removed from the circuit completely. So you get all the unhindered highs from the pickups. Unadulterated, sparkly top end, hell yeah. Switchcraft pickup selector and three-way sliders, pure tone output jack. The capacitor is listed as Soviet paper and oil military spec. <laughs> Crazy Ukrainians. You know, when you demo as many guitars as I do, it's not common to come across something as exciting as the Valiant Jupiter. Like when I first saw the guitar, I mean, I did love the look of it, but I thought it was just gonna be your standard Fender clone. The Valiant Jupiter is not your standard Fender clone. 
it's better than that. It has the aesthetic and the vibe of an old guitar, but it's been massively improved on, built from the ground up for the modern player. It mixes and matches so many familiar elements, 25 and a half inch scale length, 12 inch fingerboard radius, Jaguar electronics layout. Then they've gone and done so many premium upgrades, Duralumin components, Bell Bronze saddles, Goto locking tuners, bare knuckle pickups. Doesn't hurt at all that the thing has an incredible relic job. Next time, uh, please roll the fingerboard edges. That's really the only major piece of constructive criticism I have for Valiant. Oh, and strap locks, you want to protect this thing. Other than that, incredible concept, great execution. I love this guitar. You've seen me use it in a couple of videos now ahead of some of my more expensive big name brand instruments because I just love playing it. Expect to see a lot more of this crazy Ukrainian guitar on the channel because it's f***ing awesome. So of course, those are just my opinions on the Valiant Jupiter. I'd love to know what you're thinking down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, f*** that like button up, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications that we don't miss any new videos from me. All that stuff actually really helps out gaining favor with the algorithm gods. Massive thanks to Luke for nailing the demo mix and to Jordan for editing the video. And of course, massive shout out to Remco and the rest of the amazing patrons for making it all possible. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.